Hebrews 9.14. The Bible says, can we start from verse 13? The Bible says, for if the blood of bulls, for if the blood of bulls and of gods and the ashes of an hay for sprinkling the unclean, sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? That was a question. Praise the Lord. It says, how much more shall, the, if the blood of goats and bulls and what will do all that, if the blood of animals will do that, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to, to serve the living God? Praise the Lord Jesus. Our consciences are the places that hear God. Praise the Lord. Your conscience is that very place that hears God. Now, the Bible is giving us a clear whatever of, of the conscience. It's saying, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? It is impossible to serve the living God if your conscience is not purged from dead works. It is impossible. You can't serve the living God if your conscience is not purged from what? From dead works. What are dead works? The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Praise the Lord. That one directly tells you that if a person or if a Christian is not living by faith, they are dead. And out of them comes dead works. If you're not in faith, you're dead. They say your life is dependent on faith. You live by faith. It is faith that gives you life. It is just like saying, in this earthly realm, we live by oxygen. But now God is telling you that you, for you, for you, your oxygen is faith. Without it, if it is plucked out from you, you're dead. And that is how people now start to live lives that are what? That produce dead works. Dead works are those works that people who, how can I say, that people who do not walk in faith perform. For example, someone can come in this ministry or someone can visit this church and say, from today I want to be the best, the best, best toilet cleaner. Then you give yourself to clean toilets. You're cleaning toilets. You're doing what? You're here ushering. You're doing everything, everything you want to do. But with the mind that you want to attract something from God. Baskets are empty there. You see people walking around giving. People are running with, with money they give. Your mind for giving, you're like, okay, I think that's why Fanero people are rich. Let me get uh, 10,000. I think that's why these people are rich. Then you run and you also put the money there with an expectation that you will get rich. Those are dead works. Praise the Lord. You come in the presence of God every day, but you have this thing of, oh, I have missed, I've missed praying for the past two days. God is very angry with me. So you have only come to pray because you want to avert God's anger. Dead works. Dead works. Anything that is not done in faith is sin. So the Bible says. Guys, these people that you see bringing money and putting there every time, they are not putting there to attract the goodness of God to make them rich. In Fanero, we have recognized, number one, that we are so rich, my God. We are too rich, and because we are too rich, we give. We serve the living God from the end of what Christ saw for the church. That is how we serve God here. Praise the Lord. There is this thing I like saying. We do not pray to become powerful. Why? Because when we were growing up, they used to tell us that a prayerless church is a powerless church. Come on, somebody. That's not true. If that could be true, then Christ died in vain. 
That is not the story of the church. What do I mean? Jesus told the disciples something. He told them, go and wait in the upper room and you shall be endued with power. Power is available in the inside of you. You don't pray to get the power. You are already too powerful. It's the reason why you pray. That is why the Bible says the effectual tremendous prayer of the righteous person makes tremendous power available. You cannot avail what you don't have. Come on somebody, reason with me. You can't avail what you don't have. You are only availing power because you are the power source. You are only availing power because you are the powerhouse. You are God's powerhouse. You are God's power building. Why? The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in the inside of you. The spirit of God is the power of God. But now he does not just ascend on you the way he used to the old prophet. To you he dwells in the inside of you. Why do you think God brags and says your body is my temple? It's not just for no reason. It's because in there is his power. That is where the power of God is. My brother and sister, you will never become as powerful as Panero people because you're praying. No, here, number one, we are first too powerful. We know where the power is. If there is anyone here and you have the Holy Ghost, lift up your hands. You are powerful. He said you shall be endued with power. The spirit of God came upon them. That very spirit dwells upon you. You are power object. You carry the power of God. I'm not against prayer. I love prayer. Don't be cheated. I love prayer. But prayer does not make you powerful. Praise the Lord. You are called that every time you're going to kneel down, when you beat your knees down, that is the time for you to avail what is in the inside of you. That moment when you start to say, Father, God says, Wanji, what is my powerhouse seeking to, 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 to fulfill this moment? What needs to be sorted? When you say, Father, all of heaven responds. They're like, Wanji, ready to serve you. When you're there and you're saying, I thank you that Fanero is going places. They say, yes, it is going places. I thank you that Fanero is taking over the whole world. Yes, it, is it has already taken over the whole world. What do you mean? I thank you that, yeah. Power is being availed. What is that power in the inside of you? That power is not just for you to walk around and say, I'm powerful. Bananga, you guys, do you know what? I'm very powerful. Me, I'm very powerful. No. No. Praise the Lord. The Bible gives us a scenario of Jesus. He had gone to seek his God. And while he was just there trying to, 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 to kneel down and catch a moment with his God, they told him something. All men seek you. Not some men. Not few men. All men. You see, they were looking for Jesus, but Jesus had retreated. He had gone to pray. He had not even, he had not even caught that moment. You know, you people who love prayer. But they came and they when they found him, they said, all men seek for thee. Guys, all men are seeking for power. All men are seeking for solutions. All men are seeking for the presence of God that is coming out of the inside of you. All men are seeking for it. All men. All men sought for Jesus. And this is the generation that we are living in. That is why you see Fanero enlarging and enlarging and enlarging every other day. All men seek for these things. Why? Because every time we are serving, we are not serving with the mind that we want to, to truly please God and make God say, uh, 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 it's okay, yesterday you lied, but I uh, uh, got your back, uh, it's sorted. No, that page is done. That page is done. Let me tell you one thing, child of God. Regardless of what you will ever do in this life, God will never be angry with you anymore. It will never happen. All the anger that used to make God so angry. There's even a place in the Bible where the Bible says there was smoke that was coming out of his nostrils because he was angry. All that anger, Jesus took it upon himself. All that thing that could make God angry was punished in Jesus Christ. 
You are a free person. You are free. Walk daily as a free person. Come to the presence of God always excited. Come to love your God excited every day. You are free. There is nothing, child of God, that you will ever do that God is saying, let me just wait. So he's standing there with the axe. He's saying, this time I have to hammer right on her head. No way. No way. It is finished, Jesus said. If you be in Christ, the Bible says you are what? You are a new creature. The old has gone. Behold, the new has come. You're walking in the presence of God every day. Let me tell you one thing. You know, the sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden made them lose the presence of God. Yeah? Because the authority that God had given unto them, they got it and they gave it to the devil. How? By accepting to eat the fruit. Some people say it's an apple. Some people say it was like a grape. Some people say it was a guava. Some people say it was a fat mango. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't change the meaning. It was a fruit. Praise the Lord. So they ate the fruit and because they, immediately they ate that fruit, they transferred the power and the authority that God had given to them to the devil. Because they chose to agree to see the light in the devil's light. Now, the story did not end like that even when they left the garden. That was not the end of the story. That is the essence as to why Jesus comes. Why? Because there was unfinished business. The mind of God for creation was not that the devil be superior. The mind of God for creation was not that the devil takes over. The mind of God for creation was not that the devil has his chance and death and inflict the children of God. That was not the mind of God for creation. Somebody say amen. amen. That is why now Jesus comes. And Jesus dies. But Jesus does not die a normal death. Jesus goes down to where the devil dwells and defeats him. And he gets all that power and all that authority and everything that God had bequeathed you and gives it back to you. And says, reign with me, child of God. He gives it back. He says, get back to your position. The Bible says that we have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. In life, our business is to reign. We are reigning in this life. When Jesus had given you that power, he did not leave you dilly darling around Lugogo here, no. He, the Bible says you are seated with him in the heavenly places. He brought you up to sit with him, to share in the fellowship of that mind. And that is your mind. You reign. Look at your neighbor say, I reign in this life. I reign in this life. It doesn't matter what is happening around me. I reign in this life. Praise the Lord. Now you have the power. Now you have the authority of God upon your life. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, there was a time when Jesus was, there was a time when disciples came to Jesus and they were asking Jesus, how come we have failed to rebuke that Kadimon? Hmm? How come? And Jesus answered them that this goeth not save by. He did not mean that devil. My father was trying to explain to us <laughs> recently. He did not mean that that Kadimon spirit that you have to fast and pray for it to go. No. No and no and no. What the disciples were fighting with. The disciples were fighting with one simple devil which has mounted a boy and had refused to go. But listen to me somebody. Jesus did, not re Jesus did not conquer one simple devil. Jesus went to the hell and got the father of that simple devil. The father of them all. The originator. The progenitor of all that kind of works and evil and defeated him squarely. Defeated him. Defeated him squarely. 
The Bible says he made a public spectacle of him. The Bible says God disarmed the principalities and the powers that were wrenched against us and made a bold display and a public example of them triumphing in, over them in him, in it, at the cross. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, in those days, what used to happen was that when you will kill an enemy of the land, you will bind him on a horse. Then you come dragging him for everyone to see around the city. That is what it means. For everyone to see that, guys, this one is done. This one was the issue. But the issue is sorted. It is done. I know I'm talking like this, but there's someone saying, ha, huh, what do you say? You'll go back to your house. The devil is going to come with a, with a machete. That is when you will understand what you've been teaching. No, come on. The devil is a defeated foe and he knows it. He knows it. It's you that doesn't know. He walks every day knowing, I'm defeated, I'm defeated. I'm, oh, I'm defeated. I'm defeated. Okay, I was trying to remember if they, I'm defeated. He knows it. It's you who doesn't know. Praise the Lord. Jesus dealt with it once and for what? Let's go back to the conscience. So, you cannot serve the living God if your conscience is not purged. What purged the conscience, the Bible says, the blood of Christ. You remember that scripture in the book of Genesis? No, Exodus 8. Exodus 8. Guys, if you can get what I'm teaching you tonight, the presence of God will always be on your life like this. Exodus 8.1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. Our father said that you are only effectual at, at service as you are free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If that place that hears God in the inside of you is not free enough, is not released, is not let loose, serving God is an issue always. Because you're always dispensed at the place of doing to get. The Bible says that by, 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 by your own works, by your works you cannot... Let me go there. Galatians 3.11. It says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident that the just, the just shall do what? It is evident that the just shall live by faith. You cannot be justified in the eyes of God by what you do, by the offering that you bring to attract something that you already have. The Bible says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You have all things that pertain to life and godliness. But how do you walk in them? By faith. The Bible says, 2 Peter 2, 3, it says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory. Praise the Lord. It is through the knowledge of him that called us to glory. But if you do not have faith in the inside of you, you cannot appropriate those things and start to live in them. There's a scripture my father likes quoting that it is of, it is, it is of faith that it may be of grace. When your heart starts to see that I have all things in Christ Jesus, I have all things in Christ Jesus, even this thing that, 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 that people don't have and I seem not to see right now, I have it in the name of Jesus. The more you see it with the eyes of the Spirit and with the eyes of faith, and the more you start to walk in it, the more that grace becomes a simple thing in your life. It's now a grace to you. So people start to say, hey, this one is graced in this particular way. No, it's because you started at a place of faith. My father said something so beautiful. He said that grace is given to men of faith. Grace is given to men of faith. Praise the Lord. 
So it could be that thing that your eyes is seeing right now. It is seeing right now. It is seeing right now. It is seeing. It is seeing. It is just a matter of time. It will belong in the name of Jesus. Guys, and that is how we, we serve God. We serve God because we have come to the newness of the life to understand that all things that we need, God has given unto us. All things that we need, God has given unto us. That is your freedom for service. So when you're standing before God, you're not even scared that you're going to lose salvation. You're not singing, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. And renew your right spirit within me. No. That was David because David did not get the experience of what it means for a child of God to be born again. He could say that, not you. Praise the Lord. For you, the presence of God abides. He dwells. Can I show you a certain scripture? 1 John 4, 15. It says, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. If you have confessed that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Do you know what that experience was? The experience was that the greater came to bless the lesser. God dwelt, God came in the inside of you and everything that made you a human being was sapped, was quenched was eaten up to a degree that everything that only means him and is him remained in the inside of you. That is why the Bible says that it is God that both wills and does in the inside of you. Even your own will was swallowed up. You don't have a will, but that which is the will of God. You can't will differently from God, child of God. He entered you and everything that was human was eaten up. There was nothing about you that is human. It says, for it is God. Philippians. It is him that both worketh. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When you wake up in the morning, anything that God wants for his pleasure, it is him that he wills and performs through you. So do you see how you can't be off the mark? You can't be off the mark. It is God willing. It is God working. Praise the Lord. Now, you do not just preach. It is God preaching in you. You don't just walk. That is God walking. You don't just eat. That is God determining your food. You're saying, Mama, eating, walking, those are kind of things. Not with a child of God. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered of God. Are they kind of steps? You're saying even going to the shop. Yes, even that very going to the shop. God is the one that is turning you around. Saying, let's step here. Go here. When, you, when you're about to knock your foot, the Bible says, he commands his angels to hold. They're like, uh-uh, don't knock your foot. You know, you know why I, I like evening walks? They used to tell us that evening walks are very romantic. -y. They are very romantic. They are very romantic. No, I don't see any romance in them. Do you know why I like them? I like them for one very reason. I can't just imagine what I, I like when I get out of my house and I'm walking and I'm just imagining a company of angels. Sometimes I just want to close my eyes and just enjoy the brisk walk of the evening. So I'm there, I'm walking, I'm like, wow. I just want to say ice cream and they pass it. Chocolates and they pass it. Oba what? And they pass it. Guys, we live in a different life. This is a God-ordained life. It is not mediocrity. Praise the Lord. Now God wills and works in you and through you. God dwells in the inside of you. Every business of God is done in the inside of you. Somebody say, My, I serve God with a living conscience. 
I serve God with a purged conscience. Praise the Lord. That is why we do the things that we do here. Because we are aware, we carry that consciousness that we, you know, people like saying, like there's a lady who called me in the night and said, Mama, I'm very lonely. I'm very lonely. And you know, I'm 32. <laughs> That's dangerous. That's dangerous. It's very dangerous for you to be lonely. It's because you have not yet eaten up the scriptures. You have not eaten up the word of God in the inside of you. Guys, sometimes I'm in my house and I'm like, hey, 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 because I'm a woman, I need to style up. Because sometimes you read your Bible and crazy things just happen to your head and you start screaming. You're like, hey! You, you get your hand, you put in your hair like this. It turns left, right. Then you start shouting. Now imagine if your husband is in the house. Seriously. I don't know. I don't know. Imagine that kind of life. Sometimes it's there and, and I'm just washing my utensils on my sink. Then a certain scripture just floods my head like, Pwah! and I get the light of it and I just start to dance. I just go down alone. I just start to go down. Then before I know it, I'm just running to the, ba to the bathroom, back to my kitchen. Guys, which kind of life is that? Then they say, no, sister, put yourself together. <laughs> Hebrews 11 verse 4. Hebrews 11 verse 4. The Bible says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, eh? by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. He still speaks up to now. Being dead, he died, but yet still speaketh. What made the what made the offering or the service of Abel of that kind? What made it of that kind was because of what he believed. What he believed. We serve God because we have a mind of the finished works. He gave unto God because he had a mind of the finished works. It is what he believed that he is still speaking up to now. It is what he believed. For as much as his brother was like, ah, let me offer the minka kind of offering. This one is, he went ahead and gave the kind of offering that was in the mind of God. Why? That one day a man will need a savior, Jesus Christ. That blood will have to be shed for them to live again. And he offered in that mind what he believed. Praise the Lord. It's because we know God a certain way. It's because we believe God a certain way that we are free to serve him. You know, God talks to Moses and tells Moses that he wants his people free that they may go and serve him. But I remember one day my father was preaching and he said something. He said, when an animal is let loose, it is only let loose to the waters to drink. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Then the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you of the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away from watering? You lead him to watering. Right? And he said, Watering represents the ministry of the word of God. When God did whatever he did upon your conscience or upon your life, he released you to the ministry of the word of God. That there you may grow. That there you may be built. That from there now the nations must come. All men seek you. All men seek thee. What 
what makes us who we are is that we are freed. But when we are freed, we are freed for service. But not just any service, but a service because we believe out of the word of God. The word of God is the substance of our believing. Praise the Lord Jesus. Abel offered because he believed for a savior. He had seen the sins of his father and mother and said, no, I'm hoping that one day there will be salvation for mankind. He entered the mind of God to see what to offer. You know, Jesus, you know why they, you know why there is a reason as to why what you believe is the greatest of of the matter. Let me go to Matthew 9, 29. Can I go to 28? It says, and when he was come into the house, the blind men came into him and Jesus said unto them, believe you what I'm able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? To do what? To give them sight. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to give you sight? And they said unto him, yes, Lord. Verse 29 says, then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be returned to you. According to your faith, be returned to you. Let's look at the message version. The Bible says, verse 28, message. It says, then Jesus got home. The blind man went in with him. Jesus said to them, do you really believe I can do this? They said, why? Yes, master. I mean, why? Yes. Why? Yes. Yes, master. He touched their eyes and says, become what you believe. Become what you believe. Guys, these are some of the reasons as to why God looks at the sacrifice of Abel and is like, oh, sweet aroma. Someone is believing something. It is not service for nothing. You become what you believe. Praise the Lord. He saw it. He saw their faith. He said, to that, become what you believe. Become it. What are the meditations of your heart every time you come to the presence of God? You know, there are those people who like saying, ah, now me, yesterday there's things that happened to me. Ah, uh, I don't think God really accepts me. God does not accept me. God, God might not even be wanting to have any kind of fellowship with me. Uh, he doesn't want any form of communion with me. Because, did God tell you that? Why do you put words in God's mouth? Did he tell you he was not interested in you? Exodus 25 verse 16. The Bible says, Thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall do at. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims. Is it cherubims or cherubims? Cherubims. Cherubims of gold, of beaten wax, shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. Uh -huh. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends. Is someone following? Okay. And... Mm-hmm. Verse 21. No, verse 20. It says, And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims do what? Be. Uh-huh. Verse 21. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark. Above the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. Do you know why God communicated that? And that is even in the Old Testament, those days. Because God wants your service. God wants you to serve him with a purged conscience. That place of purity that you hear God, that you hear his instructions, that when you love him, you genuinely have a love for God. Praise the Lord. He said, you shall put the mercy seat above Upon the ark. Why? Because the ark carried testimonies against them. 
everything that was inside the ark carried a testimony against the Israelites. Everything inside the, guy, the ark. The golden pot of manna, the budding rods of Aaron, the two table stones, they all carried a testimony against the children. But God said, no, I don't want things that carry testimonies against you. I don't want them. Bring that mercy seat. Bless it above anything that carries any negative testimony about you. Bring that one. And he says, and there I will meet with you. And I will commune with you from above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony. Of all things which I'll give thee in the commandments unto the children of Israel. I want to commune with you above those failures. Above those dead works. That is where I am. I want to commune with you above those things that people labeled against you. Above those things that you labeled against yourself. Above those things that are not in line to the mind of God concerning faith. The Bible says anything that is not in faith is what? It is sin. He says, ah, uh -uh, that is not where I want to come. That is not where I want. I want you to come up hither. I want you to come to a place where there is nothing written against you. Guys, that is how we shall do great things for God. That mind that you wake up in the morning and they tell you, someone is sick and they have this problem, A and problem. You're not thinking that, ah, now yesterday, ah, yeah, 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 no, I don't know. I don't know if it is going to work, no. Let me first shut myself in a room and meditate for 20, 20 minutes. Then I will speak in tongues for 30. Then I will, I will, I will shuck around for, for one hour. Then I'm ready to go. No, you are ready all the time. You are God's powerhouse. You are God's presence. Wherever he wants to go, he sets you on foot. There is nothing that is a hindrance between you and God. Save your conscience. That place which says, ah, I will do it, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let me call Apostle Emma. He seems to be, no, I think let me call Pastor Brian. I can do it, but you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All things, all, not some things, all things. All things. Praise the Lord. All things you can do them. That is why when Peter noticed it, he says, you, you have been called to that like precious faith. There is nothing about you that they did that you can't do. The Bible says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained the like precious faith with us through the right, you see, you see, It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained the like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. It was impossible without faith. And it is still impossible without righteousness. You know, I used to be in those, in those days, eh? and I used to want, I could break and break and break then after breaking, then I fast, then I drink oil, then I pour it upon my head, then I break, 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 break. But man, things could not shift. Why? Because those things needed faith. If you are against faith, do not expect the working of God in your life. They keep you oscillating between pendulums. Today you wake up in the morning, you're like, I've fasted 80. It is going to work. It works once, the next day it refuses. So it creates in your head a pattern. So you start to think that, oh, so it is only when I fast eight eh, that I can do some other things. So you start to fast eight. Eh. Then you notice, hey, hey, it's not working. Guys, we were not called to fast to avail power. Your fasting, your fasting does not avail power. Your fasting does not move God. For God to sit there and say, Banangi, this woman has done eight. Eh. Dear God.
Your fasting does not move God. Your fasting moves you. Not God. God already moved. And when he moved, the Bible says, he, is, he sat. After seven days of his moving, he sat. He's rested. How does it move you? It, it aligns you, it quickens you to align to the divine flow. Not God, leave God alone. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we fasted and we broke and we fasted and we broke. The day when I came to the knowledge of grace, that I, I don't even know where, how those things came. I don't even know how, I don't even know, I don't even know. Because the knowledge of you being the righteousness of God is your place of possession. You not knowing. <laughs> Let me not even mention. The Bible says that they, them, that, that they that have no understanding, they are always in the congregation of the dead. You just hear things, but you don't understand them. If you seek to understand them, you start to oscillate between two. You're like, okay, so they said I'm righteous. But again, I'm suffering. But again, they said. But again, again, I'm suffering. But again, again, they said. But again, they said. Do you know what Reuben was told because of instability? They spoke to Reuben about being unstable. Hmm? Reuben was told something about being unstable. Let me get you the scripture. It's there. The Bible says, verse 3, it says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Can you imagine? Excellence of dignity, excellency of power, and stable as water. Thou shalt not excel. When you are unstable in the matters of the spirit, you can't excel. You can't excel. You come to Fanero, they say, you are the righteous. You go back, they say, Luana, break those powers. You come back, they say, they say, you are holy. You are blameless. You, you are without blemish. You go this side, they say, you are a fornicator. You have to break that spirit. The Bible says you cannot excel. You are unstable as water. You just... Uh, uh, uh. The Bible talks again of a person that is unstable in the book of James. He said, let this person not expect anything from God. Don't expect it. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're just unstable. When something comes, you're like, they say, they say, you have the mind of Christ. Then you go to the doctor and godly report. No, we see that your mind has a problem. Your right globe is actually, then you come back, then Apostle Grace is saying, you have the mind of God. You are anointed. Then you go back, they say, they say, they, you come, they say, Gwemlalu. Then you come back, they say, you are born of God. Then, my God. How are you going to live in two worlds like that? How will you serve God with a purged conscience? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Touch your mind and say, I have the mind of God. Guys, our father Abraham had an opportunity to be unstable and balanced like this. But the Bible says he staggered not at the promises of God. He staggered not. He was the man who knew how to serve God with a purged conscience. It is your place of faith. That place that you have believed. And you have not only believed for you, but you have seen what is in the mind of God by his word. And you are serving God by holding on to it. The Bible says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That is how we serve God. We give glory to God every day. 
You wake up in the morning, you say, I am strong in faith. God, I give you glory for this is happening. For this has happened my way. I thank you that I'm anointed to see everything good that I want to see this day. Praise the Lord. That is how we serve God. Your, 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 your conscience, touch your head and say, I have a pure conscience. Praise the Lord. It was possible for the man of God to look at his dying body and to look at the deadness of Sarah's womb and say, Banangi, there is nothing to believe for. Even all of you have seen. She's at menopause. Me, I finished all my years in this life. I'm waiting to die. There is nothing. There was every situation to make him stagger. But the Bible says he wasn't unstable, no? A man who is too drunk with wine and doesn't see where they are going, they're always like, I wish I spoke how they spoke, but you will die of laughter. You'll not hear my point. You'll not hear my next point. Praise the Lord. And that is why you have to walk with that understanding every day. The Bible says, they that are without understanding are in the congregation of the dead. Can you imagine? They are dead people. They are dead. The Bible says, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Where they are dead man, they are, where they are dead men, they are dead works. Things which people are doing to get stuff from the hands of God. They want to snatch it from God. God's hands, God's, God's fists are not clenched towards you. They are not clenched. That you have to be there and say, Ah, nzempa. Then he's saying, Ah, I'll not give you. Nzempa, nedana, we nzempa, ku nzempa. No. No. But when you check other people's closets, those are the prayers. So it's like God is doing this. He wants to give her. Then he says, Ah. Then now she hangs on the hand of God. She's like, Open this hand. Nzempa. Nange. Just like the way you have done for other people. Pass me not. Gentle. Gentle savior. And God is like, I'm passing. Now we. <laughs> oh dear God. Reason as to why ministries don't increase. Reasons as to why lives don't get promoted. Reasons as to why things are the way they are. You know, I, 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 I love Africa, but I think Africa, because we faced a lot of that thing of, huh? we also imagine that when God is there, he's like, then he says, I've just forgiven you for today. <laughs> you can't serve God that way. You know, there are people who even wake up in the morning and they're like, as in, don't hit me, God, don't. I, I did it yesterday, but don't hit me today. Like, <laughs> One of the definitions of mercy is withheld punishment. That is one of, mercy has many definitions, many. You'll read, you'll see there are very many. But one of the definitions of mercy is withheld punishment. That you wake up in the morning and when you open your eyes with this, God says, mercy. Says, ah, you're my boy, mercy. Because there is nothing about you that is against his will. It is him that is willing. It is him that is doing. David noticed it and he said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days, goodness and mercy. Can we look at it? Can we look at it in the, in, the, in the message version? I want to close. The Bible says, your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. Can you imagine? I'm running, they're just running. I'm like, oh dear God. They chase after me all the days of my life. I'm back home in the house of my God for the rest of my life. You will never leave the house of God. You were there for the rest of your life. 
Don't ask to, to enter. <laughs> like those churches we used to go and then they say, Kuli kayo kuna And you're like, so we, we have just gotten out. So you want to say mvude yo, then you're like mvude from what? Which kind of nonsense is this? The Bible says his goodness and his mercy, they follow you. Everywhere you go, they are following. You turn left, they turn left. You turn right, they turn right. Wherever you go, God is like, I want to be good to you. I want to be merciful to you. If you're here and you're worried about your past mistakes and everything, well, let me tell you one thing. If you're in Christ Jesus, when you wake up every morning, God says, mercy. 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 He shines his mercy upon you. Praise the Lord. It is the reason as to why he said, you have been ordained as a vessel of mercy. You, you, you are ordained as a vessel of mercy. That when men sit in your presence, they will start to experience the mercies of God. Praise the Lord. Somebody let's stand up and thank Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I serve God with a purged conscience. Tell another one, I serve God with a purged conscience. Let's speak in tongues in this place and commune with the God that loves us beyond any person. Praise the Lord. Somebody pray in this place. Oh, Rakaba Shande Calibrande Rebos. Shanda Calabaga Telebrande Rebosi Kerebaya. Somebody pray in this place. Somebody pray and say, I'm the favored of God. I'm the anointed of God. God loves me. His mercy is upon my life. His tender mercies are upon me. His kindness is towards me. His goodness is towards me. Somebody pray. Pray in this place. Say, I serve God with a patched conscience. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody pray. Somebody pray in this place. The Bible says God wants to show the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto your glory. Somebody pray in this place. Pray like one that knows that God has forgiven you, that God loves you, that you are serving God in the newness of the mind, in the newness of the spirit. Shanda kalaba gose katalaba garabaye. Mashete bakaranda kalibra karaba zote barande kede bayanda. Shanda kaliba gatala bra karaba zote ntele brekede bayande. My God, we thank you. What kind of love is this? What manner of love is this that you have bestowed upon us, O God? Lepa shanda kalibranda rabayande. That we commune with you, Lord my God. Lipa sonde kalabra karabayande kalaba. In your mind of who a new creature is. 
We are seeing our ministries increase. We are seeing our businesses increase. We are seeing peace in our families. We are seeing peace in the nation. We are seeing peace in Africa. My God, because we have come to this understanding. We have been anointed with this knowledge and we create the server of this knowledge in every place that we go. No person sits around us and feels judged because we are the vessels of mercy. We have been appointed to show forth the riches of your glory. We show forth the riches of your glory. We show forth the riches of your glory, my God. Our service is unto generations. Generations will hear about us. My God, because we believed. Because we believed. I am seeing businesses stretch to other generations. I am seeing ministries stretch to other generations. There is a voice of a young woman and a young man in this place that shall stretch forth to the generations. Because you believe God. Shalapakatele prenderebos. For narrow we are going far. Because we beheld the end. I see nations consumed by this fire. Because you are God's burning altar. Say. Out of you comes fire that shall consume the nations for Jesus. As we are praying, there are people that God is setting apart right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Their substance of their believing is long overdue. It is time to bring forth. I feel they are like pregnant women. I hear wombs in the spirit opening up. Hey. again because what God wants to do through you is what no eye has seen what no ear has heard what has not fallen in the hearts of men my God where are they I see wombs opening up it's your time that says the Lord For every prophet at the sound of my voice. My God, where are the prophets that are carrying this thing? Where are the end time prophets? Where are the end time prophets? My Lord, there are many here and they are pregnant. Because it is time. The seals have been broken. Oh, alabo salabaga ea. Mashende gabo saliba garosa. Ligasu ke patile garando. Zaki basika shatabaga ye. La casunte kalamba gazota baye. Everywhere where the prophets of the Lord are, right now by the power of the living God. 
be located. Listen to me. If you're a prophet, lift up your hands. I feel something is on the prophets of God in this land. We are tired of false prophets. We are tired of things that men have brought up as prophecy. The Lord is reshaping that office beginning now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether you're in the prophetic gifting, whether you're in the office, receive it now wherever you are. My God, where are the prophets of God? Where are the true prophets that shall stand in the face of governments and align the nations? Somebody touch your hand in this place. Let me pray for you. Father Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. My God, I thank you that we are stretching forth beyond just this that, 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 that is for now. Everything that we are, Lord my God, goes beyond us. Goes and goes to the nations farthest ahead of us. My God, because we know how to serve you. We know how to love you. My God, I thank you because we know you. Because of the working of your very own working in the inside of us. I thank you, Lord, my God, for that woman that you are setting apart. If you are a woman in this place, hold your head very well. A certain word has come in my spirit that my father said. He said upon the women that there is an, an intimidating anointing that is coming upon the women of this generation, upon the women in this place, that there is something that is going to shine upon your lives, that there is something that is going to throw you ahead, that what people thought, what people thought about you shall be redefined in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall rewrite history in the name of Jesus. You shall redefine find paths in the name of Jesus Christ. Every woman touch your head and say it is mine. I receive it. Father we give you glory. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. If you're here and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior Many things I've explained might not really matter to you. Please come and give your lives to Jesus. Praise the Lord. If you like to give your life to Jesus, say, Father, I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. As my Lord and my Savior. With my heart, I believe. I believe that you are God. And with my mouth I confess that Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. I am born again from today. I am born again. I am born of God. The life of God is in me. I am changing the world. In Jesus' name.